I left my heart in San Francisco. Two people were found murdered on Treasure Island just after 10 o'clock last night. 
According to police, in an area typically known for its views of the city, the couple was attacked by an unknown assailant and left dead just minutes before another couple discovered them and called police. SFPD issued a statement late last night. Last night at approximately 9.45 p.m., a couple walking through the Lover's Lane district of Treasure Island discovered the bodies of a man and a woman. Now, according to the medical examiner, they were dead only a short time. And as of this time, we have no suspects. Detective, is it true that the victims were cheating on their spouses at the time they were murdered? <laughs> Look, I'm not running a tabloid here. I'm running an investigation. But so that the news people leave the uh, families alone. Yes, the two people were married and they were married to other people, but they were legally separated. Now we've investigated them and they've been totally exonerated. Any more questions? Yeah, just um, one more. Can you tell us the way they were killed? I'm not at liberty to release that information at this time. And can this be related anyway to the prostitute murdered at Fisherman's Wharf last week? I can't comment on that at this time. Any more questions? All right, thank you very much for being professional. Although San Francisco PD didn't comment any further, I just received breaking news that is exclusive to News 4. According to my source, the male victim was stabbed repeatedly and the female victim was suffocated to death with a plastic bag. That's all the information I have for you right now. More details as they become available. Please be sure to tune in with us tonight with my special report at 6. Back to you at the studio. How in the hell did you know that, This is Rita. Uh, y yes, uh, Miss Franco. My name is Detective Culp with the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, I'd like to discuss with you your uh, newscast earlier this morning. What about it? Yeah, I I'd like to know uh, your earliest convenience when you can come down and see me at the department. What for? <sighs> well, you're cutting right to the chase, Miss Franco. I'd like to know where you're getting your information. I'd like to know who in my department is leaking this information to you. Look, I'll save you the trouble, okay? No one in your department told me anything. Oh, really? 
Well, who did that? I'm not at liberty to say. I need to protect my sources. Your, your sources? This is an ongoing investigation. People are dying out there. Have you ever heard of the First Amendment, Detective? Hey, have you ever heard of obstruction of justice? Look, I haven't done anything wrong, okay? My job is to inform. The people have a right to know. Oh, really? What, what, what about the families of those victims, huh? Don't they have the right to have this killer captured? To have him taken off the street? You're barking up the wrong tree. I didn't win all those journalism awards for being a softie. Are you cold, heartless? Bitch. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Look, I do what I do to get the story. All right, now if you're done bothering me, I gotta go. Some of us have lives. I, 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 just a second, Miss Franco. You haven't heard the last of me by a long shot. Now, if you don't talk to me, if you don't tell me who your sources are, I promise you, I and no one from my department will ever talk to your news channel again. Now, do you understand that? Is that supposed to be some kind of a threat? <laughs> That's not a threat, Miss Franco. That's a promise. Goodbye, Detective. I told you, the broad's a hard ass. <laughs> well, let's just wait till she sees my exclusive on channel two. Huh? You meant that? Bet your ass I meant it. She's not the only one that can be a hard ass. Yeah, you got that right. You told me to just come in. Don't flatter yourself. Your threats are not what made me come down and talk to you. Oh, really? Well, what did then? This did. It's the second one I received. That was on my windshield when I was leaving my office. The second? When the hell did you get the first one? This one was slipped in the mail slot at the news station. Must have done it in the middle of the night. They gave it to me this morning. It was addressed to me, and that's how I had the details of the murders for this morning's newscast. What the hell is the matter with you? Huh? What the hell is the matter with you? You know there are three families out there suffering right now, waiting for me to solve this case. You should have gave me the information as soon as you got it. I told you, my job comes first. Where the hell do you sleep at night? I sleep fine. Look, detective, bottom line is I'm here now. I'm a little concerned that he knows my car. What if he knows where I live? This is what's worrying me right now. Anybody? Following you, you see any weirdos around, any strangers trying to talk to you? No, nothing like that. Anyhow, I thought we could help each other out. Really? 
How do you figure that? Well, he's written me twice already. I have the feeling he might write again. Anybody else touch these letters? No. That's why I put them in plastic. The only prints on there are mine. Yeah, let's hope they're also the prints of the psycho. So, are you sure these letters are actually from the killer? He's the only one that knows the uh, one knife was used in two murders. And he's the only one that knows how the victims were killed. Hey, uh, Joe, could you come in here a minute? So, what do we do now? What's gonna happen? CSU. Look at your car, that's for Prince. What is it, Bill? Uh, Joe, this is uh, Rita Franco from Channel 4 News. Yeah, I saw when she came in. How you doing? Fine, thanks. Well, we know where our leak is. And it's not in our department. It's the killer. He uh, wrote her these letters. What? Jesus. Once you get trace on these immediately. I want to know everything about this ink. I want to know everything about this paper. I want to know everything about this printing. And I want CSU down in the, what, the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Your car? Mm -hmm. Down in the parking lot, her car. Dust it for prints, dust the whole damn thing, all right? All right, I'm on it. All right, thanks, Joe. What about my newscast tonight? You go on as regular. You tell him you know the murders are connected. In the letters? Do I let the audience know that I'm actually receiving letters from the killer? No, no. Um, I don't want him to know that we know. No, just tell them you got your information from the usual anonymous sources. Right. What if he comes looking for me? Don't have to worry about that. We're going to have an officer escort you to work. We're going to have an officer escort you back. And we're going to have an officer in front of your house 24 hours a day. It's going to be all right. on Treasure Island last night are connected with the murder of Pamela Davis last Wednesday at Fisher's I was informed by an unnamed source that the murder weapon used on Pamela Davis was also used on the male victim last night. Without official word from police, it appears we have a serial killer in the San Francisco Bay Area. We will keep you up to date as information comes available. Hello, Hello.
Yeah, this is cool. And we just got done with the car. No prints, no hairs, nothing. Just her prints. What about the letters? Same thing, no prints, no saliva. The paper can be found at any office supply store. Same as the pen, untraceable. Sorry. Thanks. All right, let me know if you get anything good on this guy. Yeah. So what's up, Bill? Not a damn thing, no prints on the car, no prints on the letters. I say we hit a brick wall. Wait till he contacts Miss Franco again. So what do we do about these reporters? I mean, the phone's been ringing off the hook ever since the newscast, and you know we can't dodge him forever. Look, Joe, stall him till tomorrow. All right, till tomorrow. Okay. So how's the girl? She's all right. She's fine. She's, she's a strong lady. Eckersley should be taking her home right now, and he's got the first watch at her house. Very good. I really appreciate this. No problem, ma'am. It's my job. So you're going to stay here all night? Yeah, I sure am. All night. Do you want to come inside? Oh, no, I can't do that. I can't go inside. But um, don't worry. You know, if you're feeling frightened or nervous in any way, here, just take this radio. Now, just talk right into it, and I'll be in your house in a matter of seconds. Okay. You just press the little button. Thank you. No problem. You have a good night. You too.
I didn't even know you. Oh, I don't know you either. What? I just know that I want to kill you. Officer? Yeah, uh, you okay, ma'am? Yeah, I didn't mean to startle you. I just made some hot cocoa before I turned in. I thought you might like some. Oh, well, thank you, but um, can you make it some coffee? I really can use some right now. Sure, how do you take it? Cream and sugar, please. Okay, I'll bring it out in a minute. Thank you, ma'am. Go cream and sugar, same as I like it. Um, you know, I don't know how people can drink this black. It's just too bitter. Mm. Thank you very much for the coffee. No bother at all. Mm, wow. This tastes better than my wife's coffee. But don't tell her that. <laughs> um, well, if you get hungry or something, just let me know. I'll make you a sandwich. Oh, no, 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 thank you. Uh, the coffee's fine. Well, I'm just gonna read a book and get ready for bed. If you need anything, don't hesitate to wake me. No, no, no. I've already bothered you enough with the coffee. Well, good night then. Good night. Oh, what if you have to use the bathroom? Oh, no. I can hold it for a long time. I mean, I've been on stakeouts for 12 hours straight. Hey, I will not leave this place for anything, okay? Okay, thanks. Good night again. Good night.
He's in here! He's in the house! Oh, he's in the house! Where is he? Where is he? He left a note. He's somewhere in the house. All right, listen. You go to your neighbor's house. You stay there until I call you, all right? Go, go, go. <laughs> Dispatch. Officer needs assistance. Okay, at 1728 Piata Street. Okay, uh, suspect is possibly a serial killer and is considered armed and dangerous. Copy that. Assistance is on the way. Yeah, they're zipping up the body right now. It's not the same M.O. Looks like she was strangled by a rope. But I got a feeling it was the same son of a bitch. Of course it was. Son of a bitch, he leaves a, a Polaroid here at Rita's. He leaves a letter here at Rita's. He wants us to know that it's him. That son of a bitch is pushing us. <laughs> You're telling me? Commits a murder, leaves a note and picture at Rita's house? How the hell did he get past Eckersley? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I've been asking him since I got here. Did you, uh, did you get anything more out of that uh, roommate? Did she tell you anything? Nope. She just walked in and found her laying on the floor. The neighbors didn't see anything. Why, why in the hell would he leave a Polaroid at Rita's? Why, why a letter? <laughs> Probably just to freak her out. How's she taking it? Uh, she's all right. She's she's a little shook up. I'm gonna send Eckersley home. I'm gonna spend the rest of the night here. <laughs> You're a married man, Bill. Hey, hey! Don't fuck with me tonight, Joe. All right? I'm doing my job. Whatever you say. What about the note? Did you get anything off of that? Uh, let me let me read it to you. Tell me what you think. I uh. See you have company. Your lack of trust saddens me. Don't you know I would never hurt you? You're not like the rest of them. She had to die. It was his will. And then there's, uh, I, I, I think it's a Bible quote. Hey, uh, hark, hear. O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Jesus, what a fucking nutcase. Maybe we can talk to your priest friend, the one who baptized your daughter. What, Father Gomes? Yeah, maybe we can talk to him about this cycle's religious ramblings. Yeah, you know what, that's not a bad idea. He, uh, he helped me on another homicide before you came up with me. Yeah, I, all right, I, I'll, uh, I'll give him a call tomorrow, all right? All right, I'll talk to you later. Officially, uh, hit the fucking wind, will ya? Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Sure. I'll sleep on the couch. So how'd it go? Did you get any sleep? Oh, yeah, I slept like a log. <laughs> like a log, huh? Yeah, you know, and that nice little couch. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Quit thinking with your dick, will ya? <laughs> Besides, I, I don't think of her that way. Well, I do. I look at every woman like that. Yeah, that's why you're single in your mid-thirties and living with a blow-up I do not. You do too. Do not. I heard rumors. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, here he is now. Hey! Father Gomes! You think he'll be able to help us out? Well, at least he gave us some kind of clue with these letters to the murder. 
Ah, uh, Father Gomes, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. No problem, Bill. I'm glad you called. We've missed you in church. Ah, uh, yeah, well, Father, you know, I've, I've been so busy with uh, uh, This is uh, my partner, Detective Joe Alva. Good afternoon, Father. We met at uh, Maya's baptism. Yes, I remember. Very good to see you again. Pleasure. So, what can I help you guys with? Well, I'm sure you heard about uh, the murders recently in the city, newspaper, all over the radio. Yes, I read in the newspaper this morning there was a fourth murder, a young woman. They were all murdered in different ways. Last night was actually strangulation. We're positive it's the same perpetrator. See, every time he commits a murder, he writes a letter to this newscaster who's helping us with the case. Now, we're under the assumption that these letters have some kind of religious connotation, especially the, uh, the last one, I think. Oh, excuse me, I think it is a quote from the Bible. Anyway, I was wondering if you'd take a look and give us your opinion. Uh, they're in the order of the murders. The first one talks about sinners. The second one mentions being forgiven because he does for him. Finally, the third one looks like a quote from the Bible. Yeah, I believe that's Jeremiah. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Well, what's it all mean? Well, it's complicated. It's from the First Testament before Noah. There are fanatics out there that seem to think that God created evil. And a lot of them use passages from the Bible to prove their point. And there are a lot of passages that aren't meant to be taken literally, but metaphorically. So this guy thinks he's working for God. He brings evil to sinners who aren't following the laws of the Lord? I can't give you a definite answer. According to his passages, he seemed to think something like that. What do you know about your victims? Uh, person was a prostitute. I think she had, what, 11, 12 priors before she was murdered. Uh, second, a couple at uh, Treasure Island. They were both married. Yeah, to other people. But they were legally separated and we checked out their spouses and they're totally exonerated. So we know that it wasn't them. What about the one last night? The one last night was an exotic dancer. She was on her way home from work when she was murdered at her home. You see, we're running with the theory that he's killing sinners for some sort of religious purposes. Well, prostitution is fornication. And adultery is definitely a sin. It's the seventh commandment. Nudity is technically not a sin. But it can fall under fornication if it's used for some type of sexual gratification or arousal. The church frowns upon it, but in general, there's nothing against nudity. So the psycho's making up his own rules? It sounds like it. But he believes that he has justification from the Lord. But killing's still a sin, isn't it? Absolutely. But he doesn't believe that he's killing. He believes that he's cleansing the filth in the name of the Lord. So if he believes that God will forgive him for all those killings, then why does he bother to use gloves? Why is he so afraid to get caught? Sometimes you can't explain crazy. Well, that about says it all, doesn't it? So why was he talking like a shrink? 
did his PhD in psychology before he ever went into the priesthood. Right. So what are we headed to now? Let's go to Rita Franco. I want to see how she's doing. <laughs> you want me to win the car? <laughs> <laughs> Detectives. What the hell happened to our unit out there? I sent him away. And you are? Uh, detectives, this is my boyfriend, Barry. He's been away on business and just got back. How's it going? Barry Hudson. Detective Call. This is my partner, Detective Joe Alva. How are you doing? Look, I appreciate all the help you've given Arita while I've been away. But the police car parked out front and all the extra attention has made Rita pretty nervous. So I told the officer to leave. I'm installing an alarm system right now. I'm going to be right here until this man's found. Well, I appreciate your concern for Miss Franco, but I strongly suggest you reconsider. That squad car wasn't out there to bother you folks. It was out there to protect Miss Franco. I appreciate your concern, but I'm here now. Okay? I'm an ex-Marine. I own and I know how to operate a firearm. She's gonna be fine. Well, no disrespect, but that decision is up to Ms. Franco. Thanks, detectives, for everything, but I really do feel a lot better now that Barry's back. So, uh, we missed your newscast this morning. Did you mention the incident of last night? Just what you told me to say. I talked about the murder, but I still haven't said anything about my involvement or the letters. Good. So has anything happened since the newscast? No, nothing at all. I mean, you'd be the first to know. The minute that man tries to contact me again, believe me, you'll hear from me. All right, just checking. Well, I wanted to stop by and see how you were holding up. So any leads, anything else I can say on tonight's newscast? Well, we are kind of going with the theory that he's killing these people out of some sort of crazed religious perversion. And I'm working with this Catholic priest friend of mine with the letters, and hopefully he can give us some kind of insight. Yeah, but we're still investigating those leads, so don't say anything about that. Besides, I mean, ain't you afraid? You still want to talk about the cycle? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned, especially since I've been stalked in the past, but if I show fear, he wins. Okay, it's my job, and this is a big story. I'm already biting my tongue not to say more than what you want me to. Oh, I know it's very difficult to do that, but you're doing the right thing, and you're doing a fine job. I understand. Well, I'm running late. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I just got to get ready to go to work. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are you going to change, or are you going like that? I'm just dropping you off, right? I'm not going in. You like? Yeah, th that way I can finish installing this alarm before it gets dark, and you know, then I can come back and get you. Okay. I'll just be out in a bit. Bye, detectives. Bye. Bye-bye. She's a... She's a really tough woman. You know that stalker she had in the 90s? She took Krav Maga classes, ended up kicking the shit out of the guy. What the hell is that? Some type of karate? Israeli martial arts? Self-defense? So what was the stalker's name? He died in San Quentin about five years ago. I uh, checked him out. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. If you uh, see anybody or anything suspicious or anything happens around here, you don't act, you understand? You give us a call. With the police, that's our job. Yeah. Sure thing. Thanks again. So, uh, 
You want to do a background check on the boyfriend? What do you think? <laughs> Jealous? Oh. Stop that shit. I'm old enough to be a father. Grandfather? Hey, hey, fuck you. <laughs> just don't trust anybody, that's all. Yeah, I think he was just trying to play man of the house, you know. Impress the girlfriend. Yeah, let's hope you're right. Let's get some lunch, huh? You mean dinner? It's already past five. Time flies when you're having fun.
phone back at the restaurant. Oh, well, go get it and I'll bring the car around. I've already told you officers twice. Uh, detectives? Detectives. He went to get his cell phone, and by the time I pulled the car around, he was dead. Look, son, I know you're distraught, but I gotta ask you this while it's still fresh in your mind. Did you see any kind of cars, bicycle, any strange person? Oh, nobody. In this day and age, who would do something like this? I don't think it was a hate crime. What do you mean? He didn't come after you? Look, it was either personal or it... Personal? He was the sweetest person. He didn't have one enemy. I, uh... I'm sorry for the loss. Wait, you were gonna say something. You said personal or... or what? What did you mean by that? Well, I, I can't jump to any conclusions until the medical examiner comes and takes a look at it. Wait. What do you think this is related to all those murders that have been happening throughout the city? Well, like you said, we won't know anything until the ME has taken a look at you. So all the info we have on you here, is this all current? Yes. We'll notify the family tomorrow when the body can be released. Thank you for your time. That's all we need. You find this son of a bitch responsible for this. We will, son. We will. Look, Joe. Yes, sir. I want you to call Rita. I want you to tell her about this murder, and I want you to tell her we think it's connected to the psycho, okay? I'm on it. I want her to get on TV, tell her viewers, maybe we can get a clue, maybe we can get something. I'm gonna call the uh, medical examiner and make this priority. We got to get something. Good evening, I'm Rita Franco and we have breaking news. 
A man was found murdered in the parking lot of Pier 39 just under an hour ago. The victim, a gay man, and his partner, both in their early 20s, were taking in the view at the pier. Police haven't speculated whether this is a hate-related crime or just a random act of violence, but they are urging citizens to please contact San Francisco Police if they happen to be in the pier between the hours of 5.30 and 6.30 and remember seeing anything or anyone strange or unusual. Hello? Hey, I'm about to get off. Are you ready? Uh, almost. Uh, I'm just getting out of the shower. Did you watch the newscast? No, I, uh... I was installing the alarm. It's working pretty good. Why? What's going on? There was another murder today. Where? What happened? Pier 39. A gay couple just checking out the pier. One walked away. He comes back. Finds the other one dead. Is it the psycho? They don't know yet, but... I kind of got the feeling from Detective Alva that that's the case. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Alright. Okay, I'll be there soon. Okay? Okay, hurry. Okay, bye. What the fuck? Yeah, this is cold. Detective Cope, this is Robertson. Yes, sir. You got some news for me? I sure do. I just finished my preliminary exam of the pier victim. Yes, yeah, definitely the same knife as the Fisherman's Wharf and the Treasure Island murders. I thought you said that. Anything else? No prints, no hairs. We got plenty of fibers, though. But without a sample to compare it to, doesn't help us any. Not until we catch the guy. But as far as DNA, we got nothing. Uh, all right, I appreciate the call. Um, we'll keep each other posted, all right? Will do. What do you say? Yeah, that's our killer. Same knife, but no trace evidence. I had a feeling. Me too. Well, let's hope Rita's newscast uh, brings us some type of lead. Detective Alba. Hi, Detective. It's Rita. I was trying to reach Detective Culp, but I got his voicemail. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, he was on the phone with the medical examiner. So, what is it? Well, Barry picked me up in a panic. Why? What happened? Well, he was coming to pick me up, and he found a new letter on his windshield. What? Where is it? I got it right here. And where are you? We're both at my office at the station. So why in the hell would he move the car or even touch the letter? There could have been evidence he just destroyed. He panicked. He was concerned for my safety. Just wait there, don't move, and don't touch anything else. We're on our way. Okay. What the hell was that? There was a letter on Rita's car. And the genius boyfriend panics and decides to drive to the station with the letter. They're waiting for us there now. Jesus. Father Gomes, I think we're gonna need him again. 
You shall not lie with a man as with a woman. That is detestable. The city has become a cesspool of filth and human garbage. The flood is coming. It is his choosing. Does that mean anything to you, Father? Well, the first sentence is a passage from the Bible denouncing homosexuality. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, I believe. It sounds like he has a thing against homosexuals. Yeah, what about all that stuff he was saying you know, about the flood and his choosing? Well, all that other stuff sounds like a continuation of the other letters. You know what, Bill? I think all his letters are just bullshit. He knows what he's doing is wrong. He wears gloves to hide his identity. If he really hated homosexuals, he wouldn't let the other guy live. He's writing up all this stuff to work up a defense. So what, you think all this is a uh, charade for an insanity plea? I mean, think about it, it makes sense. He writes all this religious stuff just in case he gets caught. Any jury would eat it up. He wants us to use these letters. They can actually save him from the chair. Make a lot of good points. Father, not as a as a priest, but as a psychologist. What Joe is saying here, I mean, does it have any validity? Well, the letters did seem like they were a bit staged. Seems like he searched for each passage specifically to excuse each killing. Notice how there weren't any other religious passages in the first two letters. It's almost as if he decided to explain his reasoning halfway through the murder spree. All right, now let's not jump to any conclusions here. This guy is a cold-blooded psychopath. Now, whether he's religious or not, now, that's debatable. Insanity is very difficult to prove or disprove. I would have to sit down with him and have several sessions in order to have an accurate answer. It's very difficult, and I'm not gonna lie to you. These letters might legitimize his insanity. Hell, any half-assed defense lawyer could easily spin these letters into a slap on the wrist. Also, why the hell did he pick Rita to give these letters to? That's my main concern. I have a feeling that was just random. He was hoping that she'd use them in her newscast. That's the reason why he continues to give them to her. He wants you to mention it on the air. He wants you to plant this religious insanity in people's minds. People would easily believe his claims that he's killing for Christ. Well, I know one thing for certain. This man's not a Christian. If what you folks say is true, then we gotta discredit this guy. We gotta prove that all his murders are premeditated. That he's nothing more than a cold-blooded, psychopathic serial killer. The defense is gonna try to prove that he's insane anyway, right? Huh? Well, without these letters, it's gonna be a whole hell of a lot harder. So, what do you wanna do? Beat him at his own game. Let's use his methods against him. Huh? Let's use his methods against him. You put us on the air. You put us on your show. You put Joe on. You put me on. You put the good father on if he agrees. We get on the air and we tell the world that he's a fraud. Nothing but a fraud. These letters never see the light of day. Hell, I'll even make up my own letters. Hey, it's time. I got the TV set up. Come on. Oh, 
Hey, I'll get the popcorn. Good morning, and we begin with our top story. The person responsible for the five murders in the last two weeks has sent several letters addressed to this station as well as the San Francisco Police Department. Until now, we've been unable to release any information regarding those letters upon request of the police, but last night, SFPD contacted News 4 and released copies of those letters as well as granted the following interviews. The, uh, the killer has been sending a, a couple of letters in the past week in a lame attempt to try to convince us that he's crazy. Well, he's crazy, all right. He's crazy like a fox. He knows exactly, and we know exactly, what he is trying to do. He is nothing more than a cold-blooded killer and we need your help to get him off the streets. Well, let me read to you one of his ramblings. You fucking morons are never gonna catch me. I killed those three bitches. What are you gonna do about it, stupid <laughs> Well, there you go. That's a genius poet that we're dealing with. I mean, he thinks he's this big man writing this stuff. What kind of man kills three women and a homosexual? I guarantee you this punk never got any attention from women or even men. As, as I read this, he well, I got picked on his whole life. This is his way of lashing out. He's nothing but a coward, plain and simple. We've also contacted a part-time consultant who's actually helping the San Francisco Police Department on this case, priest and psychologist, Father Frank Gomes. I have worked with police before, and I have dealt with serial killers in the past. Now, after reading these letters, I can tell you that it's all for show. After last week's passages that this killer has left, I can tell you that he has done that to make an excuse for the murders that he's committed and to make you think that he is a religious extremist. He is not. He is not a Christian. He is a fake and he is a fraud, just like his letters. Police have also informed me that they're very close to catching the perpetrator, and as always, News 4 will be more on the story as information becomes available. You can download excerpts of the letters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Ma, what are you doing? Hello, Rita. I have been trying to reach you since yesterday. Why haven't you returned my calls? I've been worried to death about you. I'm really sorry, Ma. Things at work have been really hectic, and I don't even have time to sleep. 
I just want to know you're okay. You know, every time I turn on the television or pick up a newspaper, there's nothing but talk of this crazy man killing people. Do you know he's already murdered 10 people? Five, Mom. Whatever. I just want to know you're all right. I know. I'm fine. Don't worry. <sighs> so, how's Barry? He's good. Have you been making up for lost time? Ma. Oh, come on, Rita. I tell you about my sex life all the time. I don't ask you to. All right, all right. I just want to know when I'm going to be a grandmother. Is that too much to ask? After all, you have been seeing Barry for several months now. Mom, it's only been like four months. Having a baby hasn't even entered my mind yet. All right, all right. I was just asking. Don't get so upset. So, what is it, Mom? Did you need something? Well, I was calling to ask you and Barry over for dinner. Mom, Barry has business dinner tonight. Well, that's perfect. You can come by yourself. Okay, fine. Sure, what time? I don't know. Whatever time is good for you. How about seven? Ma, I go on the air every night at six. I could probably make it there by eight. That'll be fine, honey. Uh, Ma, the news director is calling me. I gotta go. Okay, sweetie. I'll see you at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Bye, Ma. What's so funny? <laughs> you are yourself a bitch. Don't you, uh, <clears throat> don't you think you went a little overboard on that interview last night? <laughs> Fuck him. I hope it makes him cry. <laughs> Fuck him. I hope he comes looking for you. Well, you know what? Me too. I'll enter my clip in that lunatic's head. Ah, ah, now, wait a minute. Don't you watch the news? He's not a lunatic. He's perfectly sane. <laughs> My ass is vibrating. Yeah, this is Cole. I have a small request. Ah, Rita, what is it? My mother's forcing me to have dinner with her tonight at eight, and um, what do I do about the officer you left with me? Oh, that's not a problem. He can escort you to your mom's, and then he can escort you back. That's his job. Just let him know when you're ready, and I'll give him the heads up. Great. Thanks, Bill. That's not a problem. All right. Bye-bye. It was uh, Rita. She's having dinner at her mom's tonight. I told her I would give her a police escort. What? What the hell's your problem now? Since when does she call you Bill? And since when do you start listening in on my telephone conversations, you pervert? Well, maybe if you turn the volume down on your cell phone, it wouldn't be a problem, Bill. <laughs> Shut up, you feeding fat fucking face. You stupid asshole! I almost killed you just now. Almost doesn't count. <laughs> Now you're dead. Pig.
this shouldn't take too long. Um, I'd invite you in, but I don't want to scare my mom. I haven't told her what's been going on with me yet. No, that's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll be out here all night. Okay. But if you do need anything, come in, okay? No, no problem. Take as long as you need. What is it, dear? Did, did you watch my newscast this morning or this evening? No, I'm sorry, sweetie. I slept in. Those neighbors, the teenage kids, they were making noise all night. I couldn't sleep. And then after you called, I went shopping and started dinner. Okay, well, um, I don't want to scare you. It's just, you know, all the murders that have been happening lately? Yes, dear. The killer's been sending me letters at the station all week. What? He even left one inside my house. My dear God, well, what is going on? Are you in any kind of danger? No, I'm okay, I'm okay. I've got the police following me everywhere I go. There's even an officer outside. He's watching the house right now. They're guarding me 24 seven. Barry installed an alarm system at the house, so I'll be okay. I don't want you to worry. I want you to trust me that everything's going to be fine, okay? Is this going to end up like the last time? What, me beating the crap out of the guy? <laughs> no, I don't think so, Ma. They're very close to catching him. This is Carl. This is Frank from CSU. All right, what do you got? Well, I wouldn't have called you tonight if I thought this was your typical carjacking, but this guy was stabbed in the chest and left here. I immediately thought of your killer. You think it's the same guy? Multiple stab wounds to the chest. Died almost instantly. What about the weapon? From the looks of the wounds, I say it was the same type of weapon. Serrated knife, just like the other ones. All right, thanks. Did you get another one? Like it. it was good to see you again, honey. Me too. Maybe we'll spend time this weekend. That'd be nice. And bring Barry this to you. I will. Thanks for dinner. It was so good. You're welcome. Now you drive safely. I will. I love you. I love you too. And you take care of my baby, okay? Oh, I will, ma'am.
is it? Hello, Rita. Hi, I wanted to get to you before you got too far away. I think you left a letter behind. Letter? Yeah, well, I found uh, this envelope with your name on it on the floor near where you were sitting. Mom, get out of the house! What? Go outside! The killer is in the house! Oh my god. What the hell is she doing? in the car until I come get you. Officer needs assistance at 915 Magna Street. Okay, please advise. Possible murder suspect inside. Stand by. Get in the car, Mom! All right. Back up is in route. Proceed with caution. I thought you were different. I won't make that mistake again. Because of your choices, he has made his choice. People will die because of your lies. What does that mean? I wish I knew the answer. Look, Miss Franco. Barbara. Barbara, I want you to know you're perfectly safe, OK? We have the whole neighborhood secure. And I'm going to have a patrolman right outside your door the whole night. Oh. And Rita, you, of course, are still under police protection. And don't worry. We're going to catch this guy. Rita, um, could you take your mom in the bedroom while we finish up here? Is that all right? Yeah. Come on. Boy, we really pissed him off this time, didn't we? Yeah. You think we made a mistake by going on TV? No. We just gotta tighten the noose. <laughs> but you know, I never thought in a million years he would follow Rita to her mother's house. Christ, man, we're, uh, we're not working with the usual run-of-the-mill sick psycho freak here, are we? So who's next on the list? I don't think he's got the balls to come after you and me. I don't care how crazy he is. So who's left? The boyfriend? And Father Gomes. Yeah, but uh, the boyfriend wasn't on television. Doesn't matter. He's got to know. He left a note on the card, didn't he? Yeah. Where's the boyfriend at anyway? It's supposed to be at some business meeting. I don't know. Did you do a background check on him? Oh, Jesus. I totally forgot. We got to check him out tomorrow morning. Yeah, but uh, look, I better call Father Gomes. We need to get a unit over there. There's no answer. What are you doing in my house? 
Who are you? I'm the fraud with the letters. How'd you find me? Scary how much information you can get on the internet for a few bucks, isn't it? I'll call the police. Get out! Get out! I can't leave until you're dead. I'm a servant of God! You go to hell! I don't care about your God or your devil. I kill because I like it. Brings me pleasure to see their pain. Damn you! Good night! Looks like this boss starts keeping us busy tonight. Yeah. Well, let's just hope that it ends here. I'm sorry, Bill. I'm really sorry. Did you take Rita back? Yeah. I uh, left the unit outside her mom's house. Barry's back at Rita's. He flew off the handle when he found out what happened. He refused police protection. What the hell you mean he refused police protection? Who the fuck is he? It's not his choice, it's Rita's choice. He convinced her that we weren't doing an adequate job of protecting her. You didn't leave there alone, did you? No. I left the unit outside. They, they can't refuse that. Not Eckersley. No. Eckersley was sent home. Let's get back there and convince Rita that her boyfriend's a dumb asshole. Come on. Maybe we should have listened to the police. What for? They put a cop outside anyway. Those idiots can't protect their own asses. I told you, I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. They're trained for this, they're cops. I'm a fucking Marine. I killed Taliban with my bare hands. I could take out every one of those cops by myself. Barry, I know you're brave. I know you want to protect me, but this guy is a psycho. I would die before I let anything, anything happen to you. Okay, the alarm's on, I got my gun in the closet, and there's a cop right outside the door. Look, let's just relax, okay? We'll, we'll watch some TV for a bit, and then we'll go to sleep, safe and sound, okay?
sorry. I'll get the gun. Call the cops! Oh my god. For me, you said you said you never hurt me. I lied. Pig. You can't blame yourself, Bill. Bullshit. Bullshit! I had a feeling about the guy. I should have checked him out. Manslaughter as a juvenile. He gets thrown out of the Marine Corps after beating the shit out of an officer. He, uh, he, he, he's off on a business meeting during the first three murders. Off on a business meeting? Come on! And then, uh, and then uh, he conveniently finds the note on the car. My ass! Christ, I'm a cop, you know? That should have right flagged it. I'm fucked up! I'm, I'm just as much to blame. I should have never left her alone with him. Yeah, let's just go. Yeah, just finished the preliminary exam of the crime scene. And? GSR on Barry Hudson's hand. The pistol was registered to him. He looked like you tried to fight him off, too. He had bruises on his head. Open and shut case. What about the knife? Never found it. Must have gotten rid of it. Yeah, thanks. Open and shut case. He's guilty as hell. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Where are you headed? Phoenix? Hop in, I'll take you as far as I go. Okay. 